This is the new Porsche Cayenne Coupe, and it's a little bit like a fiery Scotch bonnet compared to the normal Cayenne Pepper. It just looks a touch hotter, doesn't it? So this is the kind of car you're going to be considering if you're looking at something like a BMW X6, an Audi Q8 or a Mercedes GLE Coupe. Now you do have to pay a bit extra for those sporty looks over the normal can. So this starts from £62,000, which is about five grand more than the normal KN. Now, if you want to see how much money you can save on a new car, click up there on the pop-out banner or follow the link below the video to get a car out where you can check out the best deals from our trusted dealers. We don't actually do Porsches yet, but you can check out deals on the Audi, the Mercedes, or the BMW, or anything for that matter. Okay, let's kick off this review by talking about the KN Coupe's design because it's all about this more rakish back end. You have two spoilers, one here, another one here, but more on that later. I love the light bar that you get. Same as on the normal KN, and how you've got Porsche in 3D letters in there as well. Super cool. Then you've got a rear diffuser as well, and on the turbo you get four exhaust pipes, and look, I've already got a kind of stick of truth pre-installed. On the normal car, you get two exhaust pipes, but they're always real, which is a great thing. Now, from the side here, you can really see that sloping roof line. The rear door is slightly different than on the normal KN as well. Makes it look a bit more aerodynamic and sporty. As standard, you get 20 inch alloy wheels, so the turbo gets 21s. At the front, you've got lights a bit like a 911 and a big, huge grill to hoover up the road. And the front design is slightly different on the turbo and the turbo SE hybrid than on the normal KM. But whichever one you go for, it is quite a striking looking car. Here in the front of the KN Coupe, it's pretty much identical to the normal KN, which is a good thing because this feels like a very sporty SUV. Almost like you're sat in a 911, but just like jacked up. It's the flat dash, makes it feel sporty. So does the position of the steering wheel, the layout of the dials, a particular like this on this car. These sporty seats like on a 911 with this tartany fabric. I also like the quality in here, brilliant quality. Everything you touch feels expensive. There's leather pretty much everywhere. Even the grab handles, they are damped. The mirror looks expensive. No piece of trim wobbles. Oh, the paddles of the gear selectors. Solid metal, none of your plastic rubbish. The only cheap bit of plastic I have found in here is just this little bit here. Houses the light for the door locks. That's it. Other than that, absolutely blooming lovely. And that brings me on to this car's specs. As standard, all KN Coupes get a 12-inch main infotainment screen and some partially digital dials. You also get a powered tailgate, our adaptive suspension, front and rear parking sensors, and dual-zone climate control. Then, as you move up to the KNS and the KNE hybrid, they're largely the same as the normal KN, but they have six piston rather than four piston from brake calipers. Whereas when you move up to this turbo version, you get 10 piston calipers, a Bose sound system. You also get 18 way instead of the normal eight way adjustment on the sports seat and the heated in the front and the back. And adaptive air suspension rather than the normal adaptive suspension. Oh, and if you move up to the turbo SE hybrid, that adds torque vectoring across the rear wheels for improved handling and some bright badging about the place. There is, of course, a massive range of options. And one of the packs that you might be interested in is a lightweight pack. So what that does is reduce the car's weight by 22 kilos. It includes things like 22 inch alloy wheels, which are actually two kilos lighter than the normal 21 inch alloys that you can get on the turbo. Also, it features this lovely carbon roof, which actually lowers the center of gravity. As standard, the car actually gets a panoramic glass roof, but this, is just a little bit better for sporty driving. And with the carbon pack as well, you get some carbon fiber accents throughout the cabin. Right, that's enough of that. Let's continue this review by talking about the infotainment system. So you've got this beautiful widescreen display, super colorful. You can move through its functions using the vertical menu on the right hand side, and it's all easy to navigate, while the built-in sat nav makes it easy to program destinations and waypoints. That said, while Apple CarPlay is standard, there is no Android Auto, so I can't connect my Samsung to it, which does my head in. Also, the system's small icons are quite hard to hit while you're driving as they don't make the screen click and vibrate to tell you that you've hit the buttons correctly like they do in an Audi Q8. Still, there are some shortcut buttons lower down on the center console which do click and buzz when you press them. Also, the Cane Coupe gets some semi-digital dials. Now, I say semi because the central rev counter is actually mainly analog. That's quite a nice touch. 
However, either side there are digital screens. The right one is controlled by the right swivel wheel on the steering wheel and displays things like the sat nav and trip information. And the left screen is controlled using the left swivel wheel and that shows stuff like your active cruise control. I do think the system is pretty good, but overall I do prefer the system in the Audi Q8, mainly because it's got Android Auto. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Audi Q8, just click up there on the pop-out banner in the top right corner of the screen. Go check it out. In terms of connectivity, well, looky here, we have a couple of USB ports here and a place to put your mobile phone. 12 volt socket there next to the cup holders. Speaking of which, look, they are pretty big, so you can fit large bottles in them. There's plenty of space in the door bins as well, and they're lined with felt, so things don't rattle about when you're cornering quickly, as you will do in this car. The glove box is also lined with felt, though it's not particularly large. In terms of the seating position, really good. You can get it nice and low if you want to feel a bit more sporty or jack it way up if you're on the short side. Also, there's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel and you move it electrically, which is good. Anyway, let's hop into the back and see what it's like there. Now, it may have a slopey roof line, but getting into the back of this coupe version of the KN is no harder than in the normal car. The doors open nice and wide. The only thing you do notice is that the rear window isn't quite so big, so it is a bit darker back here, but there is still plenty of room. Now, Porsche has lowered the seat slightly, so you've still got a decent amount of headspace, despite the fact that it does have a sleeker body. And it's not too bad that they've done that because you still feel quite comfortable in the seat. And even with the front seat slammed low, you can stretch out as well. And look at the amount of knee room I've got. Blooming loads. Biggest difference though is this, you've just got two seats rather than the normal three seats in the back. Now they do recline, but no, they don't slide like in the normal car. You've got this storage area here, which is pretty crap really. You, know, you can put your mobile phone in there, but it does keep you apart from your passenger. You can pull this down and you've got some cup holders there. Though if you want to rest on it, you end up putting your blooming elbow in it. That hurts. Now if you want to, you can fold this down and you have some through loading, which is handy. But if you don't like this arrangement, do not worry. You can get a normal five-seater rear bench if you want to. That sloping roofline does affect the person in the middle seat. So it won't be as good for carrying three in the back as the normal can. And if that matters to you, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Now back here, you have some heated rear seats. There's a space there which is for God knows what. I imagine it is for the four zone climate control there's some more storage area down here which is a bit more useful and you've got two usb charging points you've got huge door bins here in the back as well the quality extends all the way back here nice solid metal door handles and on this turbo version with these sports seats look you actually have airplane style pockets on the seat backs rather than the normal nets that you just get in the standard kn it doesn't fit in a child seat well it's quite easy to get the seat into the door but you're probably going to lose these removable ice fix anchor covers but it's easy to mount the seat itself and there's plenty of room back here even for a rear facing seat now let's go check out the boot the capacity is about 15 percent less than the normal KN, and that's due to that sloping roof line see there's a price to pay for all that added style isn't there still it's pretty large similar to something like an x6 and an audi q8 really now that sloping roof line does mean that it's kind of a bit more awkward to fit things in that a ways because then the boot won't shut but it's actually all right to slide things in and out there is a bit of a boot lip you don't have one on the normal kn but look that's not going to bother anyone is it and you've got this scuff plate so you don't scratch your paintwork underneath here is where well, you could fit a spare wheel but if you don't have one you just get the tar goop and you also get some extra storage there. If you have the hybrid version, you don't have that space. It's taken up by batteries, and that means you have around an extra 15% less space than this car. There is some extra netted storage area here. You've got a 12 volt socket for plugging in some kind of auxiliary stuff that you might need. But if you want to fold the seats down, you have to walk around. There's no levers in the boot, like in some other cars, which is annoying, so bear with me. Then they snap into place. Now they don't lie completely flat. Ah. This is very undignified, as you can see, but it's a reasonably continuous floor, so when I finally make it back ground again, it's okay to slide items all the way to the front. And there you go. So, how much stuff can you actually fit in this boot? Well, with the seats folded, there's space for three large boxes and 10 small boxes. A bike will fit with both wheels attached as well. With the back seats up, you can carry two large suitcases, a baby buggy, and two small suitcases. A set of golf clubs also fits with space left over for one large, one medium, and two small suitcases. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Porsche Cayenne Coupe.
While the normal KN has a useful retractable load cover like you'd expect on an SUV, this coupe version has a parcel shelf which you'd normally find on some cheap hatchback and you can't even store it underneath the false floor. Bugger. You have this horrible paddle to start the car, not a push button. I think the reason they've got that is because in the past you used to slot the key in and then turn it, but now you don't need that with keyless go. And they've kind of kept a similar system because Porsche owners are so frightened of change. <laughs> the button to control the noise from the sports exhaust is here on the infotainment system, which is a bit annoying if you're in some other menu, such as the satellite navigation, because then you can't press it. It'd be better if there's a button down here to operate it so you can press it as you desire. The release of the boot is really low down, so it gets covered in road grime. So when you go to open it, your hand is just covered in dirt. Yeah! These ceramic brakes, £4,000. And if you add up all the options to this turbo, which starts at £105,000, it takes the total cost of this particular car to £127,000. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. You don't have to worry about the reversing camera getting covered in road drive because there's a special wash function. <laughs> now it's clean. How awesome is that? If you have the car with air suspension, you can actually alter the ride height between different settings. So you can rise it right up if you want to go off-road. Speaking of which, there are various off-road modes to choose from which alter the locking of the rear and central differential for added grip. Oh, and I should point out that with the air suspension you can actually lower it from the boot to make it easy to load items in. This car has the largest spoiler fitted to any normal road going SUV as standard and you can raise it up at the press of a button in the cabin if you want to show off how sporty your SUV is. When you're driving at over 56 miles an hour it actually raises up even further for increased downforce over the rear axle. You can get a huge, colourful heads-up display and it's very configurable. In fact, you can have some analogue-style dials which make it feel super sporty. You can get this car with rear wheel steering which will turn the rear wheels in the opposite direction of the front so you can do tight turns. Perfect for you turning. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I just wanted to tell you that CarWow is crowdfunding. That means from just £10 you can invest in our business to share in our future success and I guess be one of my bosses. Click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link below to find out more. Hurry, the offer is limited. Anyway, on with the video. Let's talk about engines. So the normal KN Coupe gets a three litre V6 turbo with 340 horsepower. You can do not six in about six seconds. Then there's the KN Coupe S, which gets a 2.9 V6, but with twin turbos. So it has 440 horsepower, you can do not 60 in five seconds. Then there's the e-hybrid version, which has the same engine, the three litre, as the normal KN Coupe, but it adds electric power to boost the output to 460 horsepower and 0 to 60 in around five seconds as well, but around 70 miles per gallon if you use the plug-in hybrid technology. Then there's the turbo, which this car is. Four litre, twin turbo, V8, 550 horsepower, and oh my God, it's blowing quick. But if you want something quicker, then there's the turbo S e-hybrid, which has 680 horsepower because it's boosted once again by electric power and it can still do almost 60 miles per gallon. Now all K and Coupes come with an eight speed automatic gearbox and four wheel drive as standard. Okay, now it's time to finally drive this K and Coupe and seeing as it's the turbo, I want to see how fast it can get from naught to 60 miles an hour. So I've got my specialist timing gear up here and I just flip the car into sports plus mode. All I have to do then is put it into drive, left on the brake, floor the throttle, performance start ready, go. That's quick. That's quick. And that's 60. That is 60 right there. Oh my gosh. And it did 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, which is insanely fast. This KN Coupe is pretty easy to drive in town. The steering's pretty sharp, the brakes aren't too grabby. That automatic gearbox is really good and smooth at changing gears. You already notice it's doing its thing, really. The car's good over bumps. It is better with the air suspension. It's not so good on the normal spring with adaptive dampers. I don't think it goes over bumps quite as well as an Audi Q8. What I can't complain about is a turning circle. So this car has quite a good turning circle for a big SUV.
and it's better still if you have the optional rear wheel steering. So look at that, easy U-turn. That does help you when you're parking as well. So here's a parking space. There's not actually that much room, so I'm gonna see if I can squeeze into it. Here, the all-round parking sensors and standard fit reversing camera do come into play. And you are gonna to need to use those because the view out the back window is very, very limited. It's like a letterbox. Now this one's upgraded to have 360 degree view camera and that helps even more when you're trying to squeeze into gaps. Oh, I mustn't crash into that new Audi. You have to be quite gentle with the throttle otherwise it suddenly starts lurching forward and it'll catapult you into the back of the car in front. So you just have to let it ease forward. And there we go, quite a tight gap, all very easy. Anyway, let's get the heck out of here. Oh, I love rear wheel steering. Just two maneuvers to get out. Result. This Cane Coupe is also really good to drive on the motorway. It's super stable at speed. I mean, it's designed for just hammering down the autobahn at 150 miles an hour. One thing you do notice though, is there's quite a bit of noise from those big tires. That can get on your nerves a little bit, especially if the surface is bad. Now, some people might prefer the Range Rover Sport because you sit up a bit higher, you feel more like you're king of the road, but still, I quite like this low slung drive position of the KN. It just feels more sporty. Now I'm just cruising along at 50 miles an hour in comfort mode. Let's say I suddenly need to overtake someone. I'm gonna floor it now, see how quick it gets to 70. So here we go. Kick down's pretty rapid and 70. That quick! What's most remarkable though is considering all that performance, this thing is returning 22 miles per gallon, which is actually all right. If you want more economy, get one of the e-hybrid models and they can do like up to 90 miles an hour on an electric power alone. It can even drive for about 23 miles under electric only power. They're good as well because they're quiet, no engine noise, just waft about. Finally, we come to where the KN Coupe really does stand out and that's a twisty road. So I'm gonna turn this dial, put it into sports mode and it's gonna make sure this car is as low as possible. It's gonna stiffen up the suspension and we should be in for some fun, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a monster! This particular car is upgraded with the active anti-roll bar, so it just remains completely flat when you go around a corner. It did a little jump there as well. It's got torque vectoring so it can send the power where it's needed most to really slingshot you through a corner. Oh my gosh, this thing is mega fun. And it has a rear drive bias feel to it as well. This is the sportiest SUV there is. Be warned though, with those e-hybrid models, they are heavier and they're not as sporty to drive. They're just not. So if it's fun you want, get the normal car, especially the turbo. It's a sports car of an SUV. So then, what's my final verdict on the Porsche Cayenne Coupe? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist it. Now, I know it has a bit less space and it costs more than the normal Cayenne, but that sloping rear roof line just makes the car look so much better, and I prefer it for that reason. So there. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, click on the windows below. You can watch more videos. If you click on the box over there, you can find out more about how you can invest in CarWow and be part of our future success for as little as £10. Hurry though, because the offer is limited.